So we might pop a vitamin or two in the morning, sometimes at night too, to get added benefits to our bodies, nutrients and so on. But the big question is, can you overdose on vitamins? Consultant urologist, Dr. Jeremy Thomas is here to tell us if we can and exactly which ones and how much is too much. Hey doc, morning. Yes, hi, good morning, everyone. As a urologist, uh, what do you do yeah. particularly? Right, so my field uh, in medicine focuses on the genital urinary system, uh, which essentially means uh, the lower abdomen of the pelvis primarily, um, the kidneys, the tubes from the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, um, of course, the prostate in men and the pelvic floor. So disorders, disorders of the pelvic floor and conditions surrounding the genital urinary organs. Okay. And it's primarily the surgical aspect that I deal with. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I was like about last year, years old, when I realized that you could OD on vitamins, right? Um, yes. So vitamins are really kind of supplements to what your body already produces. Talk to us about the importance of vitamins and how they work with what we already do um, as right. human beings. All right, so uh, vitamins are actually quite essential to normal body functions, um, to metabolism, to many um, functions uh, within the body. So they're essentially organic uh, substances that are not actually produced by humans, and um, they're definitely necessary to carry out uh, multiple important functions uh, in the body. Um, they have antioxidant effects, anti-inflammatory effects, amongst many others. Um, but essentially, as I was saying before, essential for um, multiple body functions. Right. Essential for normal metabolism within the body. So you, your body produces some, and then we get others from the food we eat, right? Correct. Okay. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Doc. Well, uh -huh. Right. What I would say, though, is that what, what we consider vitamins to be, where they're not actually produced um, well. Yes, for example, say vitamin D, um, you know, in the presence of sunlight, you do produce some, um, but for the most part, vitamins have to be taken in and um, you have to be supplemented um, in your diet. So it's usually taken in by a diet because not produced by the body. Um, okay. The, uh, Don't stop going, Doc. I'm not cutting you. Sure. Okay. No, no, I was going to say, essentially or initially, the word vitamin actually came from vital and amine, meaning it was a vital um, product that's required for normal body function, not necessarily produced by the human. Vitamins, though, uh, speaks to a group of organic compounds. So organic means that they're produced by plants or animals. And as I said before, they're essential for our normal uh, metabolism. Okay. So what should our daily vitamin, as you call them, um, mm -hmm. regimen look like? What should we be taking? Okay, so uh, that's probably where a bit of the controversy is. So is, ideally, you should get your vitamins from your normal diet, so um, fruits, vegetables. Um, your, your diet really should contain most of your vitamins. Um, however, for whatever reason, if your diet is uh, deficient, then, you know, you should take in, you may consider supplements. Or if there are certain conditions where, you know, you may, there may be malabsorption of certain foods, or um, say, for example, you're pregnant um, or you're elderly or not in the sunlight, there are certain conditions um, that require uh, more amounts of vitamins that may require that you take in um, supplements. But ideally, it should be within your diet that should be um, satisfactory for taking the correct amount of vitamins. Hey, Doc. Um, yes. With, uh -huh. this, with this COVID phenomenon, right? Right. A lot uh -huh. of folks have been taking a lot of vitamins. Um, right. I hear people ODing on Bico Zinc. Um, right. I hear vitamin C, especially right. D. I've heard B12. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think there's cause for, do you think we know what we're doing or we need guidance as to what we're taking? Because I think some people are just guzzling them down, not knowing that if mm -hmm. you take too much of one, it could cause a problem. Sure. So I, I do think we need guidance. Um, I think essentially because vitamins um, form a part of a healthy immune system, um, this is where it has come in that we should be taking excessive amounts. But if you look at the studies and history has shown that overdosing or taking excessive amounts of vitamins won't necessarily boost your immune system. What you actually need is what your daily requirements are. And so this is where the mistake is made. Um, and zinc is actually a mineral as opposed to a vitamin, so it's an inorganic, but it's also essential 
for certain functions, amongst other minerals such as you know iron and so on. Um, but that, that's a mistake that is made. So there is a potentially overdosing on some of these um, uh, mi mi micronutrients. And uh, they're potentially um, harmful side effects yeah. if they're over a long period of time. Can we talk about some of those? So I'm reading this says that two, sub two supplements that can have detrimental effects on the body if taken in large quantities are C right. and D. Right. So, as a, so I'm going to be, of course, biased here because my area is uh, of specialty is urology. So why I had actually made that statement is that in terms of both vitamin C and D, for example, vitamin C is actually an absorbic acid and it's actually metabolized to oxalate in the body. Um, now, a concern for any urologist um, with regards to that word oxalate is that it actually forms the commonest um, urinary stone or genital urinary stone that we see. Commonest kidney stone is a calcium oxalate stone and of course calcium is one major component of that. Um, so, of course, if you're taking in excessive amounts of vitamin C over a prolonged period of time, apart from digestive um, abnormalities, the concern is that you do put yourself at an increased risk of forming renal stones. And of mm -hmm. course, if you form stones already, you're already at an increased risk for um, forming kidney stones. And so that um, further increases the risk. For vitamin D, it has everything to do with the um, metabolism or the absorption of calcium. And um, there's actually also a concern um, that excessive levels of vitamin D over a prolonged period of time will lead to or can lead to um, hypercalcemia and the effects of that, you know, which include, um, you know, polydipsia, which is a lot of urine, polyuria, can affect the kidneys. You can get this thing called nephrocalcinosis, where your kidneys essentially become filled with calcium plaque, so to speak. And it can lead to renal impairment and kidney failure over time. Um, also, it's going to increase your risk for forming stones. Um, it can affect it neurologically, it can cause confusion. So mm. there is um, note to be taken, and we should be careful with how you know, um, we overdose on vitamins, which may not necessarily help us um, fight COVID if we're overdosing on them, and of course can have um, harmful side effects over a prolonged period of time. Okay, we have to go, Doc, but quick answer sure. if you can. Vitamin no C, should we be taking a thousand milli? I mean, is it dependent on sure. the individual or what's the cap and what's right. the cap for D? So the, the, the requirements are actually way less than what's written on some of the vitamin C tablets. It's actually about 90 milligrams per day for men, 75 milligrams per day for women. 90? Right, 90, yeah. But you can take up to a thousand. So you'll see that, yeah, you can check it. Um, but you'll see on most of those um, bottles that they'll put between a thousand to two thousand. Now, over a short time period, um, that's not really a concern. But the concern is if you're taking it for a prolonged period of time. And as I say, you know, the build up effect. I'm taking um, a thousand milligrams a day. Right, it is 90. It's actually way less than what you're seeing on most of the bottles. Okay. So yeah. prolonged period is how long? <laughs> That's very Irish, sure. but I'd say um, a matter of months, um, you know, weeks to months would I would consider it a, a, you know, a prolonged period of time. Wow. Okay. That's very important information. I never mentioned something. I mean, quickly, I know I'm out of time, but you yes. know, there are vitamins are divided into water soluble and um, fat soluble. Fat soluble. Mm -hmm. Right. The water soluble ones, such as vitamin C, there is a decreased chance of you really um, overdosing on them as they're excreted in the urine. But as I mentioned before, the fact that it is metabolized to oxalate, there is still that risk over a prolonged period of time. Okay. The fat soluble ones, though, that are primarily stored in the liver. That's where your issue may arise because they can be stored, they can build up, they can cause uh, toxic effects to the liver and so on. And of course, there are a few other harmful um, side effects. Right. Not detrimental, rarely ever a death reported with vitamin overdosing, um, but it is possible. Yeah. Um, but still, uh, vitamin toxicity is still a, a significant or a, a worrying concern, especially in these times. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Very, very useful information. Appreciate it, Dr. Jeremy Thomas, consultant, urologist. Um, no deaths reported, thankfully, but kidney stones, not a pleasant thing to have. So if you can, talk to your doctor and get more information on this, okay?